Welcome back everyone, this is Shadow Drake, and so we're back to Vulcan as I'm going to talk about parallel phase change device configs with the counterflow. So now, uh, the difference between phase change devices and custom devices is the fact that of course you can add more inline pipes or utility pipes or adjust how the pump rate is or the pipe volumes or anything like that so that you can get better phase change efficiency. Uh, the problem with phase change devices is, of course, that they're capped out at 200 liters, and you're also limited by the pressure setting on the device itself. Now, the only real way to increase how much thermal energy is flowing is to just add them in parallel. And typically, you're going to see problems with that because, like, like I mentioned, phase change devices will suck in all available gases and depending on how the atmospheric simulation runs for the game at the time some devices may have contents inside them and the others will literally be starved and then the next time you load the game you'll suddenly see them flip flop and then it's it's just really kind of random and this is kind of what this is to highlight that so right now i have my condensation chambers attached to like the uh, 20c pipe or 30c whatever that is that was when i originally did this system and I went ahead and put them both through a counterflow and obviously connected them all together to be a parallel configuration. And as you can see here, this heat exchanger and that one. Well, I should have connected this on this end because this is this is cold. Uh, this heat exchanger in the front actually has flow going through it. This other one has absolutely nothing go going through it completely. So that highlights the first thing. When you're going to parallel these systems, this configuration can kind of work, but tying both sets of pipes together means that you will have absolutely zero work done by all but one of the counter flows. So even if I had another two counter flow heat exchangers, the game has chosen arbitrarily that this one's going to work. The next time we run this, the game might choose a different one to work. And that's just because, if you really think about it logically, liquids that are flowing in this pipe will flow out to the evaporation chambers and gas on the, on the other side. When the game calculates the atmospherics, it's going to see pressure differential, liquid differential versus these two, and it's going to cause a flow. And it's going to do the same thing for the gas. Pressure differential, pressure differential, it's going to cause a flow. Great, this one gets all it. Now it looks at the next pipe. Well, it equalized the two, so there's theoretically zero flow. Same thing for the gas. They're equal, zero flow. And this is why only one counterflow heat exchanger can work like this. Um, and now, to take a look at this, you'll see that this condensation chamber right here is the one that's actually condensing something. This one is not. So what that means is the game has arbitrarily decided that this condensation chamber is going to suck in all available gases to do the work, and this one is literally left high and dry. And my hand broke. Go figure. And if we take a look at it here, it looks like this evaporation chamber is the one that got chosen to get all the liquids. This one is literally left to do nothing. So, yeah. As you can see, the way the game handles the atmospherics is going to cause issues for that. I don't know if I can fix my hand. That don't, doesn't look like it. So, how do we work with this? How do we actually make the system work with multiple devices? Well, the best thing to do is not connect it on one side. So, if I break the connection here... Well, suddenly now I have technically parallel, but I have the ability for two condensation chambers to do work. So you see now this one is doing work, and this one's also doing work. At the same point, this counterflow has gases and liquids passing through, and so does this one. So, as you can see, if you keep these in parallel, you can split them up so that you can have a single device technically being affected at once. So in this case, the evaporation chambers are common. 
So I I don't I I did not fix anything about this. This one will still be the main evaporation chamber. It's going to get all the liquids. This one will get literally nothing. And so what ends up happening is this one's going to get uh, get the gases out and it's going to put them to this pipe network and then it's going to get split between these two condensation chambers. And it's like you can see the flow is still about the same for both. I say about the same because one has got a greater differential than the other. But they're both doing work. They're both, both these condensation chambers are trying to heat up that pipe network. So now let's, let's do this in the other way. Let's, let's remove the pipes for the evaporation chambers. So now that I do this, the same thing is going to happen. Oh, hey, my hand fixed. Now, we're once again going to have one condensation chamber that's not going to be doing much of the work. And again, the game has chosen this one to do the work. And this one is going to do nothing. And so it kind of goes the same thing. Any liquids this, this has is going to go through both chambers. So now you see that this evaporation chamber now has liquids coming in. And this one still has the majority of the liquids, but it's still doing work. So, the key takeaway of this is, obviously, you can't really truly fully parallel the system and have all the pipe connections. Uh, obviously, if I break those two pipe connections over there, then I'm essentially just having two literal phase change devices in parallel, you know, basically doing the same work. But chances are you're going to want to put these in parallel because you need a greater amount of cooling or heating done. And so if, for example, uh, since this is Vulcan, since probably the biggest thing I will want is to do cooling, I probably don't even need this second condensation chamber, this one right here. So if we just strike this conversation, uh, conversation condensation chamber out of the equation you can see that that single condensation chamber should adequately supply both of them and it's not until you won't see an issue until you realize that you have gases in this pipe network right here so if this condensation chamber ever fills and you have standing gases in the in this gas pipe network that will be an indication that you need another condensation chamber because then once this one's absolutely full to the brim the next one will take over. So there is still a benefit to having the parallel devices connected together at one end of the, of the counterflow. On the other side, however, since I want greater cooling done, the only reason I will want to keep this separate is so that you can see that these will eventually split up the liquid load. And the only way that I can get that to happen is if I go on ahead and connect these. So let's connect this. Together. All right. So that's going to warm this up. So liquid is evaporating. It's going out. And you can see both chambers are filling with liquids. This one still seems to get the majority of the liquids. And you know what? That is fine. This chamber also will get some liquids and can do some work. As you can see, this one is only doing 6.15 kilojoules. This one is getting kind of volatile, but it's doing about the same. What is going on with this one? Oh, that's why. There's standing gases over here. So you see, that this will be a good point for me to turn that one on so that we can get rid of some of this. There we go. Alright, now I got quite a lot of gases and liquids going through. Okay, now that I've fixed that, I can see we're going to get my liquids back. See, this is starting to fill up with liquids. This is starting to fill up with liquids. This is 12 kilojoules. This is about 10. So you're still going to see a few abnormalities such as one is going to do greater cooling or heating than the other. But as you can tell, both of those condensation chambers will feed 
these two that are technically separate but doing the same work. Because keep in mind, in this cooling setup, the, all the, the blue pipes are technically connected together. So to just kind of clean this up a bit. Let's just... That's so I don't have pipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're complaining. You're going to fix yourself soon. See, you fixed yourselves. Good job. All right. So, in total, I have two parallel evaporation chambers cooling down that side. And two condensation chambers hooked up together that will basically feed both of those chambers. And so the main reason you would want to do this type of setup is predominantly if you're limited on your coolant. Because if you keep the, keep in mind that I have, what, two, what, maybe three liters of liquids on both of them? About three liters of liquid each? Yeah, just guesstimating. And so... This allows both my chambers to work without me needing to fully fill them. Because when they were tied together completely in parallel, I would need at least 20 liters of liquid for both chambers to work. Because one chamber is going to have to suck up the 20 liters, and then since it's full, then the other chamber can finally start working. So just keep this in mind that you can separate them like this to kind of have a parallel system especially with the counterflows alrighty uh, hopefully I didn't confuse y'all but this was the, the last little bit I needed to show uh, as far as phase change devices and so hopefully with that you can be better prepared to make a uh, more of a cooling system, uh, better cooling and heating systems, and uh, hopefully you can eventually go into optimizing these things. So thank you for your time, and uh, I'll see you back uh, as I get more tutorials or content now. Bye!